Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. I'd like to really, really appreciate people who go out of their way to make life easier for internally displaced persons. And I think it's more important that we start having conversations like this. Very recently, we had a conversation about the federal government saying they wanted to regulate the fertility or basically regulate the number of children each family can have. I think it's very important to see that they were giving IUDs for free and helping with family planning. So thank you very much, Sumi, for that. And we're bringing you more packages like this every day on Hello Nigeria. But now it's time for us to find out how you can grow your business brand. Now, joining us today is someone who is into emerging markets, executional excellence, management, innovation, commercial and strategy, project financing, leadership, finance audits, risk management, tax application and training. He's very open to opportunities for pro bonos, general consulting solutions, coaching, speaking and facilitations. And he'll be speaking at the forthcoming Hands on Deck Leadership Seminar happening in a few weeks. His name is Benga Bamiji. He's a business consultant and he's our guest here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so we're looking at how to grow the business brand. So let's first of all start with some of the don'ts. As a Nigerian business brand, what are some of the most common mistakes that business people make? All right, um, growing the business brand, I think the first thing you need to understand is a business brand is a combination of two words, the business and the brand. So the first thing is you want to grow a business, and then you, know, you understand that the business is actually a brand. And business doesn't grow itself. It, it's grown by people who believe in that business. So they want to grow that business and make it a brand. And then the first thing you need to also understand is the definition of what a brand is. A brand is more than the image of, of a business. Brand is more than the revenue or the income you make from a business. Brand um, is what people talk about your business out of the bedroom. I mean, according to Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, he says a brand is the testimony of people about you, about your business, about what you have come out, your personality. So you're like, more like your reputation. Your reputation. And that's one of the things that accountants also uh, look at when you do what you call valuation of your reputation, what we call valuation of goodwill. So because it becomes an asset that you can trade on, that you can leverage on. That because that's, that's your brand. So some of the don'ts, to, back, to, to go back to your question of growing a business brand, is don't do what will not make the brand a living being. Your brand is a, is a personality. Your brand is, lawyers will say, juristic personality. A, a, a brand is an entity on its own that can run even when you're no longer there. We have some big brand names around the world that have been existing for 100 years, and they are still existing to today because you understand the power of a brand, the power of personality, making the brand becomes what it should be. So the first thing you need to understand or run away from is if you're, an human, you're a human being, what are those things that affect your personal health? Look at them and then apply them to your business. So, for example, you don't want to run away from not taking your drugs regularly, not doing exercise, not eating well. Now, bring those things back into your brand. You don't want to look at things that, like, not feeding your brand very well, not exposing your brand, not, not telling people about what you can do, and then your goodwill, which is the core of your brand. Those are the first few things that you don't want to do when you're building your brand. You don't want to also compare yourself with other brands in a negative way. You are a, com you are a coming up brand, or upcoming brand, sorry. Uh, you don't compare yourself to a brand that has existed for 100 years. In product life cycle, there are four stages that are involved. You have the introduction, the growth, the maturity, and the decline stage. The kind of strategy will adopt for a brand that is just coming in at the introductory stage, which we also call a problem child. Just like when you have a baby, you don't know whether that baby will survive or not. One month, a one day old baby, you can compare that old baby to a, a one year old baby. So at that point in time, the kind of strategy you want to adopt is not going to be the same like a brand that has existed, that has gone through thick and thin, that has gone through storms and has stand well and can, can increase their market price and all of that. You don't want to do that. So basically understand that you're not the same with those already established you brands. Don't, you're not. So, okay. so your pricing methodology is not the same. The kind of product you're introducing to the market must meet the target market. It's not going to be the same product with a company, a, a, pro, a brand that has existed and has hitting into the emotion of the customers. They can do anything. They can increase the price arbitrarily. You don't want to practice a kind of pricing methodology that will send your business or your brand 
off the market immediately. You don't want to die at the introductory stage. You want Let's to even speak about pricing. I'm, I'm glad okay. you mentioned pricing. In determining the pricing for your business or your goods or services, yes. what are some of the key things to consider? And I'm asking this because we find that some people, we have some portion of people that are drawn to brands that, you know, have affordable pricing. Some yeah. other people now feel, okay, because A is bringing down their price, I'll bring down their, my own price. Whereas the customer is not interested in cheap products. In fact, today I had a conversation with someone that wanted to buy luxury um, couch for, for, his, for his apartment. And yeah. then he said, oh, I can't buy that one. It's actually too cheap. But I'm thinking everybody should think mm -hmm. of something that is actually, you know, cheaper. I would, I would go for a cheaper bargain. So what are some of the things you should put into consideration when you're fixing pricing for your goods, your services, and thinking of your, your target market? In a very literal way, let me, let me bring it down, let me cascade it down in a very simple way. Two things you need to consider. Number one, very simple. Do you want to stay in the market for long? Two, do you want to just introduce your product into the market? make profit or make revenue, and then get off the market. So number one thing, if you want to stay long in the market, then your pricing will be affected. And how do you determine the kind of pricing you use if you want to stay for long in the market? Now you want a kind of penetration pricing that increases gradually, and it's increasing at the same rate, commensurate with the quality you're introducing into the market. So if the quality outweighs the price, people will think, that the price, I mean, it's a cheap product, even when the quality is higher or far, far bigger than the price, you are, at the price you're offering to the market. And then number two, you also want to look at new markets and new products. Existing market with a new product. Because we have new product, I mean, new, market, new product in the new market, a new product in an existing market, existing product in, in an existing new, market, existing, existing product, product in, in a new, new market. market yes. So when you consider these four uh, 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 scenarios, you want to now determine, okay, is my product new in the market? Is a digital age. What kind of product am I introducing? Is it something that people have not heard before? Is it something that some people have heard, but I'm trying to like reinvent it? If it's a new product or a, new, a product you are reinventing, then you have to look at a price that will attract people because believability of your brand is the first thing. If there's no believability in your brand, the name of the product, that's why it's always very important, the name you give to your product. It must not be, you can't be running a food, a, a food comp, a company and then your company's name is something tech and there is no food there. Or you, you, you are a photographer and the name of your company is Food Nigeria Limited. It doesn't, it will affect your pricing. So basically name is also very important. Name is very key. Finally, before we let you go, there's so much, you know, I feel like there's so much we, we can ask and benefit. I'm glad that you're having an event and we'll talk about that in a bit. But how important is, you know, merging the personality behind the brand and the brand. Now, before now, we used to see that people, business owners liked mm. to separate themselves from their brands. But now we're starting to see them putting themselves in the forefront of their brands as well. So as they are pushing for their brand, they're pushing for themselves as well because people are now starting to connect to the face behind the brand. How important is this in your perspective? In, the, in this age and time, this is digital age, not analog age, it's almost becoming impossible to separate personality from the brand because personality most times now sells the brand. Now, if I know that, okay, Wazobia is introducing this product into the market, I can easily connect and I believe in the integrity of Wazobia. And I understand that once this product is launched and Wazobia's name is behind this product, I don't even need to ask questions because I believe in that name. So when you have a name, it sells the product faster. The product becomes a self-selling brand such that when you get to the market, you spend less on your marketing costs, advertising costs, promotion costs, all those ones become minimal. And then when you get to the market, by the time you say, oh, this is what I do from Wazobia, can I have three? It makes it easy. So you can't separate personality today. Some other big, some big brands around the world, oh, this is made by a social company. We have some computers that are made by different companies. Oh, no, we don't need to advertise it. Don't worry. I understand it. I know the people that are behind it. So at the end of the day, it's actually very important to it's have that. It's extremely important. All right. There's so much that I want to ask you, but I'm excited yes. about the Hands on Deck conference, which you're, you're also going to be speaking at. When yes, is this I happening am. and where is it happening? Okay, so it'll be happening uh, 7th of November. And it's happening at the Ajip Hall at Muson Center, uh, of course, on the Lagos Island here in Nigeria, in Lagos, Nigeria. And um, I'll be one of, I'm privileged to be one of the speakers. I tell you, it's going to be explosive. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot to speak about. There's a lot to hear. And the good thing is that it's pro bono. 
Exactly. So yeah, for those no. of you who are thinking you want to increase your business brand, you know, you want to, yesterday we had a conversation on character development as well. And today we're speaking about increasing your brand, increasing your growth, exponential business growth. You're also te teaching leadership in business leadership, as well. Yes, I am. So we want to inform you that you can visit Hands on Deck. Hands on Deck is the event to be at, proudly sponsored by Cool FM, Wazobia FM, Nigeria Info, Wazobia TV. Now, if we put our brands behind it, best believe it's something worth attending. Exactly. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank How can so people follow you on me. social media? No problem. How you can, can follow okay, on, on social media, on Instagram, my name is Capacity Africa. Okay. Capacity Africa. That's my name on Instagram, the same name on Twitter, and then on Facebook, the same name, Capacity right. Africa. Thank you Facebook. so much for joining us. Thank you. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.